Alright, hello everyone. <laughs> so, uh, we'll be continuing from where we stopped last time with uh, responsive design. I found that most people don't really understand the concept of responsive design very well. So, I'll actually go over it with a project one of you did. I cloned the repo from GitHub. So, I'll be continuing from that today. I started it with the emergency class I held on Friday, although I didn't finish it because I had a work meeting to attend to, but I think I'll continue from that today. And if we still have time, I'll touch Bootstrap a little. So for those who have questions on Bootstrap, I'll also help you answer your questions. Okay, so those of you Bootstrap is actually a Chinese kind of stuff that have Chinese names. Don't worry, we'll discuss that one today too, so please. Uh, so, uh, sorry, Bess, please, could you mute yourself so we don't have conflicts? Okay, so uh, I think I will just continue from here. Okay, so first of all, let me share my screen so you guys can see. Okay. All right, so I hope you guys can see my screen. Yeah, sure. All right, so let me open up the project which we did last time. There's a, there's a nice pages and uh, okay, coming. Sorry. All right, uh, guys, give me a minute. Okay, so uh, before I start, please, those who have questions on responsive design and stuff like uh, best, so ask your questions while, while I get my VS code ready. So what was your question best? Okay. Uh, good afternoon. Yeah, good afternoon. My question was on bootstrap actually. Okay. Um, okay. When when I divided a session into three columns, like the whole session should, should take three columns, I could not. If, if, I, if I put uh, back margin in any of the columns, the other one goes down. But for pictures, it works fine. But for divs, it became an issue. I couldn't put spaces between the uh, the, the different divs in the column. Okay, I get your point. So, uh, okay, I'll just answer your question straight ahead. The reason why that works is because when you use Bootstrap and you divide a column or you divide your screen into three different columns, those three different columns take equal spacing. So, say your screen is 100%, one column is actually supposed to take 33.33% of your screen. So if you combine that together, I get that that's 100%. And there is no space in between them. So if you're actually going to create space in between them, you're not going to use margin. Because margin is more like uh, an outer space. So what would have been most preferred for you to use is padding. So padding is like an internal space, space inside those columns. So that would be the best thing to use, not margin, OK? Uh, especially for divs. If you use margin for divs, it's actually going to break because that margin is actually going to occupy some space, which other columns are supposed to occupy. And once that happens, for the margin to have enough space, one column has to break down to the next uh, 
the next row kind of. So the best thing to do is actually use padding, the space inside those columns. Okay. Hey, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Okay, uh, guys, I'm sorry about that. I think my network had a little glitch. Okay, so uh, continue from where I stopped. Let me share my screen so you guys can see. All right, you guys can see my screen now, right? Okay, so um, I think what we were actually working on last time was this page. You guys can see my browser, right? Hello, can you guys see my browser? You can just wave your hand so I can I can tell or raise your hand. Okay. Alright, alright, thank you very much. I I confirm. Alright, so uh that's uh, this is what we were working on last time. So I took a project from uh, one of the trainees. I took his project and I wanted to actually show how I could make that responsive. All right, so opening up live server. This is what I have. All right, so this is what I have. This is exactly where I stopped last time. So back to responsive design. And uh, let's see. All right, so just a moment. All right, uh, I hope you guys can still see my screen. If you can, let someone just say something so I know. Yes, I can see you. Yes, I can see your screen. All right, very good, thank you. All right, so, okay, so this is where we stopped last time. So the last class, I was trying to explain responsiveness and I was doing that using this project and I was trying to explain how I can actually make a project responsive. Uh, one of the first things I said was that first of all, you have to know where each element, where each element suite ends. And to do that, I had to use 
uh, border. So I gave almost every class a border so that I could actually see where each element switch ends and where it starts from. So I know which element is actually overflowing and which element is not overflowing. So I know where to start from and where to end. And with the within the last class, I think I was able to finish the header parts to make sure that this is sorry, the nav bar. I was able to finish the nav, I was able to complete responsive design for it. And I also said that I'll be editing the HTML to where need be so that things actually go in place where they're supposed to go. So I think for the last class, I was able to complete the header. I was supposed to move on to this uh, services section and uh, work on it. So please, uh, for those who were not here last time, if you have any questions, I'll give a five minutes break for you to ask so you for you to ask your questions so I can answer them later on. But for now, just try to flow along with this. If you have any questions, you can just jot it down and then later we'll discuss that. Okay. All right, so uh, I was able to finish the header with responsive design and I stopped at I was trying to make sure everything actually stays in the center. If you guys watch what I did here, okay. This is header text, sorry, header section. This, I stopped at the header section here. And for header text, I wasn't able to finish it. So I'll continue from header text. Now, from the header text, what we're seeing here, we found that this H3, doesn't have um, a responsive font size. Now we see that the font size is actually very big. It's even overflowing from the container, which is this header section. But if we reduce the, if we reduced it for tablet screens, let's say we give it like three rem, and this uh, H1, we reduce this H1, let's say, uh, all right, I reduce this to say two. Yeah, so find that things are beginning to look a lot more as they're supposed to be. Now, for one thing, if I refresh this page and you go back and you see the way the fonts were, they don't look at the, uh, what I say, they don't look the right standard they're supposed to look for this particular screen. So the font is not actually supposed to overflow from the screen. No, it's actually supposed to look and fit the screen very well. So I think the only thing that's left is uh, these guys, which I'm actually going to take away this justified content space between. And the only thing I'm actually going to do here is give a font. I'll give a margin. So let me refresh so you guys understand what I'm doing. Okay, so the first thing I first thing I did first was I defined the width of this element, this header section, where I actually get this um, this place that's actually highlighted in my browser here. Yeah? Okay, so that's the header section. I'm oh, sorry, could you turn off your mic, please? All right, so this header section, it's what contains the header text and the header logo. So the uh, first thing I did was I reduced this H3, this house repair. It's looking too big for this section. In fact, if it's looking too big, I'm not even going to talk about the services. The services is actually overflowing from the actual width of the screen. So uh, the H3, which is house repair, I'm actually going to reduce it by two. So what will I do? I'll just take this header text and go back here. And I'll say, Header text H3. I just want to get the H3. And then I'll change the font size to 
two RAM. Okay, and then the next thing I will do is change this H1, which has an ID of services. Now I could just copy this the selector he used. So just copy this selector. Okay, I'm sorry about okay. Okay. And then I'm going to change some things. So first thing I change is uh, this. I change this to two. Okay, so uh, apologies, guys. Uh, your trainer is just trying to fix uh, a bit of a technical issue, so she'll be on shortly. Okay, thank you.
Okay, um, good afternoon, everyone. Please, if you can hear me, just signify by raising your hand. Yes, I can yes. hear you. Okay, I'm sorry, Frank is having some technical issues here. So if anyone have a question on this of our tasks, you can just ask while we wait for him to log in. Okay, Omota, your hand is up. Omit yourself and ask your question. No, I don't have a question. Oh, okay. Does anyone have a question? Let him leave. Okay, so we are good, right? Hello. 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 Can you guys hear me? Yeah, but we can't hear you. All right. Uh, I'm sorry for that. My network is actually kind of bad today. I don't know why. So um, let me share my screen and continue from where I stopped. Okay. All right. So I think we are good. Okay. So this is where I stopped. Okay, so um, I was can please uh, if you didn't understand how I got to where I am now, please just uh, raise your hand and ask your question. So. Uh, if you don't understand how I got to where I am, please just raise your hand. Okay, so I take it all of you understand how I got to where I am. So let me continue. Uh, all right, so back to my VS Code. So like I said, there is a CSS property called on set, which is actually used to reset whatever style you want to actually apply it to. So. Let's say, for example, I have line heights, and I do want I do not need a line height whatsoever on any screen device. I could say line height on set, and what it does is that it makes sure that line height doesn't on any screen device actually, or what I see line it just resets line height, not just even to the browser specification. It removes it entirely. Yeah, so that's what line. Uh, Sorry, uh, please uh, mute your mute your mic so we don't hear you. Okay. okay, so I wanted to also reset a uh, margin bottom. So margin bottom on sets. Now doing this, and I check what I have here. Very fresh. You see that yes, margin bottom has been on sets. Same thing with uh, the line height. So what's left now is the H1, which is services. And for services, what I want to remove from services is the. Uh, I want to reduce the I want to reduce the font size, and put padding bottom here, which I don't need. And margin bottom, okay. I think I'll just leave the margin bottom and then I'll remove the padding bottom and then I'll reduce the font size, I think, by two rems, so from five to four. All right, so it's beginning to look nice now. So let's go back services. What we need is the font size 4.5 rem. And uh, padding bottom, padding bottom on set, and then okay, I think that's that. So let's save and see what we have. Okay, so good. So it's going to look, it's going to take shape now. 
So I think what's just left now is uh, this header logo. So for the header logo, I think I'm just going to say, I'll take you with this. So for header logo, this is what I, I think I don't need the justify contents. I think I'll move on set. Okay. Now. I can say header logo. Let me work on those deals that contain the SVGs. So I could say that gets the div. Now I'm going to say uh, I'll give them a margin of one rem okay okay one rem looks kind of small so let's see we need some space in between them so let me increase it okay all right so i think i'll leave it at 2.5 so Point five frame, and then if we leave it at this and we check, we're going to see that it's overflowing. See the way it's actually overflowing. So, what we don't want is for the first and the last to have okay. The first one we don't want it to have a left margin and for the last one we don't want it to have want it to have a smaller right margin so both of them so what i could do is this i could target both of them so i could do it this way i'll just say end type okay i could say end child or i could say end of type i'll say end of type one and mind you this one starts that stands for the first one so i could say uh margin left i can give the margin left of one rem and i could still see end of type number three and I could still see a uh, margin right of one room. Okay, let's see what we have if we do this. Now we see that they have enough space. And then I could just say, okay, zero. This zero stands for top and bottom, while 2.5 frame here stands for left and right. So I don't need margin top and margin bottom so if you come here and actually check it out you see that yes they don't have that now everything is beginning to look a lot more like it's supposed to be okay so that said i think the next section is actually this um, uh, services section so our services section already looks okay so i don't think i'm actually going to change anything here i think the only thing i'm actually going to do here is just make sure that the padding is not too much for this particular screen device okay so this is our pad this is a okay so first thing we can meet and the height and then our services section and the padding top okay margin auto all right so i'm just trying to make sure i get everything in order here so what i could do is this first things first body section 
the height is actually too much for the body section so I think I'll just take the height off so height I'll just set it to fit content and let's refresh and see what we have okay mm. oh okay made an error here so let's save so that that shows okay so this and then next thing is um, our services section of our services section on the party top i think i will unset that i'll say Padding, when I use padding top, I'll just use padding because I think I also need to set padding top and padding bottom. Say 20 rem. And okay, I think that's that's too much. That's too much. Way too much. So okay, so. Uh, Okay, so one, two, okay, so I think two rem is enough. and then then uh, looks okay i think i'll let's see i'll change the going to do right actually takes okay hello uh i hope you guys can hear me hello yes all right so um i think all right good thank you all right so i think i'm also going to change the uh, margin bottom from 40 pixels i'll reduce it to something nicer like 35 or say 34 all right so i'll copy that and margin bottom i'll fix that as 34 pixels then i'll work on the paragraph too okay so the paragraph looks okay but uh yeah, the paragraph looks okay the way it is. Alright, so I think I'll just leave it that way. And I think this next section is more like the killer of this project from everything I've seen so far. Because if, I, don't, I mean, like, most people usually, this section is what gives most people the problems. This uh, need help right away where they have to position two elements together and all uh, I mean if you go and look at this okay this is the demo project we're giving and this is what we have and okay so from what we have here you see that these are two separate divs on their own this guy which has this content here and then this other guy which has this content here so there are two separate divs which has the let's say two rows which is picture and text and this one is text and picture kind of so 
they are actually kind of different. So I hope you guys can hear me. Okay, so yes, uh, let me continue Sorry, from where. All right. Okay. That's that's good to hear. So uh, I'm glad I'm not talking just to myself. Okay. So the next section. I think I'm done with this section. Okay. Uh, let's see how many sections we still have. We still have one, two, three, four, and five. I think we still have five sections left. So uh, let's see. Let me just be done with the third section. So. Those who have questions can actually ask their questions. Okay, so the next section is uh, this body section two. All right, so let's begin. All right, so I think I'm done with the other section for the HTML. Now, I think I have to look at this other section for this guy and see what he did here. Okay, so he did a very good job of actually placing them in two different divs. I commend him for that. Now, okay. he used the, um, okay, this was supposed to be a background image, maybe. So let's see what his, uh, okay, let me save this. Let's see what his HTML has. Okay, so. Wow, okay, so the content here is actually skewed. It's not very nice. Okay, now inside here. Okay, this image one doesn't have anything. Okay, this is the main image. Okay, and then for this two, image two, and all right. Okay, okay, so for this, I'm actually going to be editing his HTML in a way. So, what I'll do is I'll create a div and I'll call this, I'll create two divs, I'll call this help content image, something like that. So, let's see, help content image and inside this this is where i'm actually going to put the image all right so i think i'll just copy this and uh, i will paste it for the second help section or help content okay. And then, okay, all right, so I think this is what we have. Now, the thing about images and responsive design is that whenever you want to use an image, like the image tag, you don't have, to, you don't really, you don't necessarily have to set the width and the height. You could do that using. the image container which is what i want to show you so uh first thing is help content first of all it's not so, the first thing i'll do is i'll punch uh, hello i'm sorry turn off your mic please so, so this is body section two which you give um, uh, a display flex yeah he did nice there so this the only thing i'm i'm going to give it a flex direction of column now the reason i give the flex direction of column is because i want them to stack on top of each other and which they just did yeah stacking on top of each other like this but then because he gave the fixed height. So you see that the content is actually overflowing. So using a fixed height, I don't necessarily get us what we want. So, uh, 
Sorry, please uh, turn off your mic, please. So, so don't distort others from hearing me. So I'm going to change the height. Instead of giving a fixed height, I'm going to use fixed content so that everything stays together. Now you see that it's beginning to look nice. Then this padding top and padding bottom of 60 pixels. Okay. Let's see what happens if we take them off and take this off too. So this is what we have right now. Good. So here we can now see that things are beginning to take shape very well. And uh, one thing else I'm actually going to do is this body section too. I'll give it a width of hundred percent. So it actually occupies the full width of the browser. That way, I think there's going to be much uni uniformity or uh, English archer, but it's going to make it look uniform. Okay, so um, I'm also going to give it a padding because I don't want the contents to be on the left. So, okay, first thing I'll do, I'll say just find content center. All right, justifying content center is actually supposed to justify the contents to the center. Let's see. Okay. That's not even working. Let me try. Okay. Okay. From what I saw, that didn't work. Okay, and uh, I think I know the reason. And the reason is because this div has a width of a hundred percent. So that's why it's not showing. So what I could do is I could say uh, help content one and help content two. Say uh, help content one and help content too now both give them a width of uh, i'll just say 75 percent just so everything works looks, looks nice so that way now uh they should be justified the content should actually be justified to the center all right, so let's see. Uh, let me also add a border here so I can actually see it clearly for myself. So one pixel, sorry, black. All right, so, okay, yeah. So it's actually, mm -hmm. okay. All right, so uh, the spy content center is still not willing to work. Okay, so uh, I think the next thing we could actually do is say margin. Margin zero auto. That's also one way to centralize text. Yep, so you see it's actually at the center now. So think yes this is okay so uh, I think the only thing we have to do here now is that we need to make sure these contents are actually aligned the right way so let's let's do this let me bring okay this is what we're working on okay so if you see if I put this on tablet mode This is how it actually looks on tablet mode of the other, just the way I'm actually doing. So we could use this as a guide to know if what we're doing is right or wrong. So, so far, so good. We've been doing everything right. So let's continue from where we stopped. Okay, so, okay, yeah, there's a little bit space in between them. So let's see. I could say margin top and bottom. 
All right, so I've just come to uh, top content one, which is the top, and they have a margin bottom of like one rem. So, yeah, just to make sure that there's space actually between them. One rem looks kind of small. I could make it two. So it's, yeah, that's enough space. So let me take away this border so we actually see everything the way it's supposed to be. All right, so, yeah. Now, the next thing I want to do is these images. Yes, these images. Uh, now, the images here, okay, uh, I think I'm actually going to have to call them together. So, uh, I think I'll just copy this. And come here and paste this. So, help content one, I'm actually targeting the help content image. And uh, yes, the help content image. And okay, first of all, let me show you guys. So, I'll see. Oh, sorry. Uh, I'll say border. The reason I'm putting the border is because I want you guys to see where the width of this element stops. Okay, so saving that. Uh, all right, so this is where the width of the element actually stops, and this is where it starts from for both images. Okay, so we could actually say. We could give this a height of say 200 pixels and our flow set to hidden. Then I think the next thing we need to do is that the images inside them we also need to style that to. So I could just see these images inside. So I'll just copy this and this too. I'll see width of a hundred percent. So if I do this, okay. Okay, I think to a height of 200 pixels actually to squeeze that. Let's work on it from here first. So, I increase that to like 300. Okay. 300. All right, so I think I can take this border off now because everything looks good. Okay. Massive images. I think this section is already taken care of because everything looks okay now. This guy is a little bit further away from the image. So this is a help content to the border, but imagine bottom of 20 pixels. Uh, that's what's for seeing. Uh, imagine bottom of 75 pixels. Uh, that's too much. Okay, so here's what I'm actually going to do for these two guys. I'll just copy this and uh, I'll just change this. Think margin bottom set. Oh, I'll just say five frame instead of twenty. Sorry, did I use frame? Sorry, I could say ten pixels, or I could use a uh, two frame. Okay, let's see what we have. Uh, all 
Okay, let's see. Uh, use a room of uh, zero point nine, which is less than one, but still okay. And then for the H three, uh, this is too much. So I'm also going to change the margin bottom too. So uh, change margin bottom to margin bottom one. One rem, because I don't need much. Yeah, yeah, it looks a whole lot better than before. Okay, so I think okay, I think I also need to work on this guy too. Oh, too much, too much margin and padding. Yeah, so margin sets to auto, which is okay, but padding margin top is too much so I'm going to say mm. margin top and I'll change margin top to like two rem that's so everything looks good okay so I think we're good now this is the next section this is also one section that is a killer with lots of issues this section and the previous section i think about an hour is actually gone now so uh, i will go back okay so those who have questions uh, i think i'll just entertain two questions if i continue so please if you have questions put your hands up then i could answer your questions if you have if you don't have any questions then i think i'll just continue but if you do just put up your hands so okay olani uh what's your question yes sir good afternoon sir i hope you can hear me sir yeah, yeah okay i can hear you all right sir i'm um, sir i'm sorry um my first question is is um, this overflow? What is the function and how do we um, work with it? And the second okay. question is about okay. the margin, the padding, and also when I was working on my task, I had to go through the internet to check some things. So I saw position. Okay. So it was that position I was yes. to move my content. So, but I don't know the best one we should use, either the margin padding or the position. I've tried to read about it, but I'm not getting it. So I want you to explain okay. a bit of that, sir. Okay, so nice question. So um, your first question is actually about overflow, right? Like what overflow is and how to use it. And second question is uh, how to use positioning, right? all right okay okay so your first about your first question about uh, overflow now sometimes you find out that when okay especially i think you guys must have come across this with responsive design projects that you might be doing you actually put uh an image tag if you use an image tag and you call certain image tag, you find that the image is always too big. And if you put it in a div, it's all actually bigger than the div you put it in. And sometimes if there's a right up below, it tends to push down the right up into another div, something like that. If you've actually had that kind of experience, just put up your hand. Okay, now, the reason is this, some images are always very big. Now, the reason for the overflow hidden is that if there is a content and you want to put an image in, not just an image, now any element, any HTML elements you have and you set overflow to hidden, what overflow hidden does is that any content or anything that is inside that html element that flows off the width and the height of cut it off so 
what I mean is that more like the content is bigger than the HTML element. That's what it means to overflow. So what it means is that you just the parts that overflows don't show it at all. That way, it helps you from uh, not breaking your code or breaking your web page flow. So that's what overflow does. So I don't know if you actually understand that part. So I like you to confirm before I move on. Yes, sir. Very well, I understand that, sir. But sir, um, right. what if uh, what if that part that is not going to show? What if it's going to be a significant part of our design? Okay, if it's going to be a significant part of your design, then you have to understand that there are many ways to kill a rat with web development. As long as it's design, there are many ways you can do certain things. If using overflow is actually going to make a significant part of your design not show, then you can change it and use something else. Okay, let's say in terms of images, if you use um, overflow hidden and use an image tag on an image and it's actually hiding off a part of the image that you want to show, you could actually use a background image instead and just make it work. Okay, so it depends on the design and depends on you who is the designer, what you're trying to achieve. All right, now on um, positioning. Now, positioning is actually very nice. It's a very good skill if you actually know how to use it very well. But if you don't know how to use positioning very well, you tend to find that positioning actually makes things actually go out of the flow of your site or of your web page. Now, what do I mean? Positioning has a couple of um, terms attached to it. So there's, you can position things relative, you can position absolute, you can position fixed and you can position static. I think those four. Now, when you position, when you want to position an element to make it absolute. You have to make sure it is relative to the parent element. Now, what do I mean? This is what I mean. Let me go back to VS Code and actually show you guys something. So, let me say. I want to use positioning on the image, uh, on these images here, these two images here, this one and this one. Now, the images, let's see, let's see the parent div of this particular image. The parent div of this particular image is a uh, help content image. So what I could do is say help content image, I give it a position of relative. And then for the image itself, I'll give the image a position of absolute. Sorry. Here's position of absolute. Now, the thing is this, once you position elements, once you want to position elements, you have to make sure that the first, the uh, parent element actually has a position of relative. Now, once you put the position of relative, then the one that you actually uh, position absolute does not leave either the circumference or the perimeter of the parent element. That way, you can actually make it move around the position of the parent element without it breaking the flow. Okay, I don't know if I answered your question, but rather than using position, yeah, to, sorry, sir, excuse me, sir. Please, can you come again? Okay, sir? rather than using position. Okay, uh, where where did I lose you? Oh, sorry, where did you not understand? Uh, the position, uh, please, we are saying uh, position absolute, like you were saying something, right? Please come again. Okay. Okay. So, uh, that with position, you find out the parent element of the particular HTML element you want to position. Now, I gave an example with this um, with this image that I'm working with here. I said this image has a container of help content image. If you, if you can see my screen, right? Yes, I can. Yes, I can. All right. So this, where my cursor is actually hovering over, this is the parent element of this image. Now, if I want to position this image relative to its parent element, 
I have to give this relative, this uh, parent element a position of relative first. Now, after giving the position of relative, I can now go and give the image itself a position of absolute. And when I do that, it ensures that the image does not leave the perimeter of the parent element. What I mean is that it does not move out of the parent element. Now, let me show you what I mean. If I go back, oh, sorry, I have to do that here from the console. So if I add a border here and I say crimson, yellow, okay, not yellow, something that's going to show, uh, let's say red. Okay, so I can say one pixel, solid red. Now, Positioning absolute means that it is not going to leave the perimeter of this uh, for, of this element. So if I remove this position relative now, you find that this image is going to move out of here. You see, it gets so big, it moves out. I don't know if you get the point of what I'm trying to explain now. But uh, with position of relative, relative make sure that is intact we supposed to be doesn't whatever elements you want to position to relative once you position the print element to relative you can now go and position that particular element to absolute that way it stays intact inside that element even if it is even if that element is bigger than it it stays inside the element i don't know if you understand Yes, yes, I got I it. Understand, I got it. Understand. All right, good. Okay, so um, one more question before I continue. Does anybody have any more questions? Uh, just put up your hand then. Yes. All right, I'm going to tell you Yeah. Yeah, sorry, good afternoon, sir. Go on, go on. Yeah, the, uh, yeah good afternoon. You, you were using, you used, um, a design last week which you actually continue today how to get you you actually use border yes. to get um uh, each element is um overflowing i i try to do it yes it's not, it's yes. not working yes yeah i try to do it but it didn't work out okay so the border uh, what i did to the border was that the border was just to show me where each element, you know, a border is actually supposed to be like around the whole elements, like the perimeter. So I actually use that to know where each element ends. And then from there, I can now start knowing which element is actually making the web page overflow. And now if you look at my screen, you see that each element has Border that ends here ends blue so that this particular space should be it overflow. I don't know if you see, get my point. Yes. So that's what uh, so that's what the border was for. The border was just so that I could see where each element ends. So I know which one is too big or sorry, which one is too long, so that I know how to set the so I know how to resize the width so that it fits the width of the screen so that was what the border was for it's not like the border has any special significance it was just to show me where each element each element where each element switch ends sorry yes. so do you understand uh, how did you how did you come about it like how did you do it you showed that the ball i think all right you look i created a class called br so i said border one pixel solid black and then i applied it in all the class all the uh, container elements if you look at this part i'm trying to show you here let me zoom in a little so you can see you can see this right okay, so yeah, that will be it automatically adds yeah automatically adds the border everywhere on, on 
all the container element in each section so that, that way it makes it easier for you know me to actually know which element is actually overflowing like when, when i say overflowing meaning that the element that's not following the usual flow of the screen so i can actually reset it okay thank you okay thank you sir all right all right all right so um uh, i think let's continue now and then i'll continue from there uh okay so the next thing we're actually going to work on now is this next section which is this guy this image yeah this uh, body section three and uh, from what we see body section three has a width and a height now one other thing i have to let you guys know about responsive design whenever you're going to do responsive design you should you have to know that if you design a height for a particular screen let's say in the desktop now you give it a say 80 uh, 80 viewport height for the other screens it doesn't necessarily have to be that 80 viewport height in fact it is best if you don't set height and you just allow the contents of the web page to follow the set height of like let the web page follow the contents of its height like don't set height at all let me not confuse you and confuse myself don't set height at all okay if you set height you find that things begin to break okay so like say an image that was supposed to be very large and because you set height it's going to be large and it's going to overflow to the next uh, section and that's actually very bad so don't always set height rather what you do is if you want to make space use padding to make space inside the elements okay don't use height to make spaces except if that fixed height is going to remain constant on all screen devices if not don't set don't always use height don't always uh, use height to set space rather use padding okay so uh body section three and for body section three i think the only thing i'm actually going to do in body section three is i'm going to remove the heights okay for body section three i'm going to remove the height so i'm going to say height and i usually use height of fixed content I use height of fit content because I want the I want it to always follow the content. I want it to always follow the contents of what's actually inside the element. Now, what I mean is for this section three now, I want this section three to have the height of the content, which is the image and this text. Okay. Now, the next thing I'm actually going to do is that I'm actually going to set flex direction to column. So I'll say flex direction. I'll set it to column because I want them to start on top of each other. Okay. Uh, please, whoever mic, whoever's mic is on should turn it off. So don't distract others. All right. So now that I've actually done that, the next thing I'm actually going to do is work on this image. Now, why am I going to work on the image? The image is too big. It's too long for this particular section. And he actually used the background image. So the problem here is the height. Now the height is actually too much. So what could I do? I could say reduce the height. All right, so uh, let's just say, I could reduce the height to like, Fifty viewport height for this particular section. So, uh, best quality. All right. So, best quality. Make the height fifty viewport height. Now, if I do it this way, it means on all screen devices, I'm actually going to have to reset. 
sets the height. And uh, with at five percent, well, I could settle the width at say forty percent because I want the image to show more. So forty percent, not forty nine. If I save, all right, see that it comes out a little bit more. Now, okay. So, okay. Uh, let's see. Let me add a border here so I see what's going on. Okay, so add the border. All right, so I see where it's what is actually overflowing and what is not. So I could actually do something about this. Let's see. Uh, the spy content center. Magic auto. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this height is actually too much. So, what do I do? Okay, I think why this actually increases because of the width. So, let me take this width off and save. And let's see. Alright, so it is still overflowing, but then not by much anymore. So, I could still reduce it. Oh, okay. I think I see what's wrong. Okay. Uh, okay, I think I see what's wrong. And I think I, I think I know what to do. Alright, so what I'll do is I'll give first quality a margin bottom. So it actually pushes down the other content. So I think I could leave this at five frame. Let's see what five frame has. Okay, so I think five frame works. So it pushes it pushes down the contents down. And uh, I think I still need to give it more. So I could give it like seven frame. Yeah, so I think this is a whole lot better. And best quality text. Uh, let's get to best quality text. And I could just set the margin. I could set the margin to like two rem. Reason I'm setting the margin is because I want there to be enough space between this guy and this guy. Now, just setting this first quality. Now I think I can actually set justify contents. Okay, uh, I could say. Best quality text and uh, best quality. I could set both their margins to auto. I could say margin. Sorry, margin. Sorry, okay. Margin, I could set margin to zero auto. All right, so okay, so this has actually squished to the center. So all right, so okay, so uh, let me move this down. So all right, now. 
best quality text okay uh, let's see I think I'll just comment this out because I don't need all right yeah very good okay so now what are section three I could give it a padding padding of two rem so there's going to be space between uh, the bottom and the top all right so this is all we have and uh, quality a width of 45% so let's see good okay now I'll change the background size from cover to contain because I want the full image to show. So background size to contain so that it contains everything. Okay. Okay. Uh, I think I could just make it 90%. Okay. Let's see 95. Oh. Uh, Hundred okay, so uh, if that doesn't work, I think I'll just let it go. Let's leave it that way. Oh, I could just say let this be fifty percent so everything actually shows good, like this. Nice. All right, so press quality. So then I think the next thing I can actually do is to reduce this text to so best quality text H1. I could reduce the font size. Uh, I think I'll just reduce the font size by one. Yeah. I'll just make it three red. Okay, and uh, okay, imagine bottom of let's see, imagine sixty. Oh, okay. Let's see, margin bottom of zero. You don't need a margin bottom. Zero pixels. So, uh, Oh, it's actually margin top. So, let me change this to top. Okay, so best quality. I think for best quality, I can reduce the margin bottom to like five so that the space between them is not too much. Okay, yeah, so this is good. Then, yeah, the text is actually okay. So, font size 1.4. Okay, so for oh, paragraph, I could actually see the uh, padding top. Okay, uh, margin top. All right, so first things first. Imagine top, I could use one rem and put in top, I could use 1.3 rem and yeah, margin bottom, margin bottom is okay the way it is, so just leave that and maybe just touch the font size a little, font size I could put 1.3 rem. 
Okay. All right. So I think this is this. Now, next section. That's actually much of an issue too. I think that should be this next section too. For some people, it really did give them issues. So these are services. Our services really did give some people issues. So I think I'll spend some time here too with it. But first of all, let's see what our services contains. Contains, okay, our services are and then inside there we have the heading and we have this uh, our services duties okay so first of all our services like I've been saying I'm just going to remove the height of body section 4 which is supposed to be our services I'll remove the height and I'll make it fix content okay and then I think I'll just give a padding I'll give a padding of like two rows zero so the zero at the end is supposed to be for left and right but I'm actually removing that so uh, let's see could add more four okay I could make it four all right so I think the next thing I have to work on here is our service duties and our service duties uh, I think I need to change it to I need to give it a flex direction. So flex direction of call nicer. Okay, and uh, it has um, okay. Let's see what the width is like. So I'll just give it a order of uh, one pixels for the black okay all right very good so the border is the width is not 100 percent so we could see uh duty now i think we could just see duty which is supposed to be the text inside we just give it a width of a hundred percent because we want it to span the full width so that the text is no longer skewed like it was like it's supposed to be all right yes and then we'll give it a text decoration of center sorry text align line of um, center all right so let's see then i think we'll also give it a i will say for duty have a margin bottom of like 2.3 rem okay and duty okay i think that's that for now all right so uh, inside duty I think what we need now is the icon and uh, for the icon I think the problem with the icon is that I think the problem with the icon is that Damn. It's actually not supposed to be like this. So let's work on that. So first the icon, okay? Okay, let's do something. Now, uh, there's something I'm actually seeing here which is very wrong. Now, whenever you're working with classes and IDs, there is a difference. 
an ID is supposed to be for just one element in a HTML page. So like this where you have, let me zoom in a little so you guys can see. Now we have this ID icon on these three divs in the same HTML page. That is totally wrong. It's supposed to be, an ID is supposed to have, it's supposed to be in only one HTML element per page. So as we have an icon of ID here, we're not supposed to have another icon of ID. It doesn't work that way. So the only thing that we can have in multiple places is actually classes. ID is actually one because they are distinct. So there are supposed to be three different IDs per se. Um, guys, sorry, just turn off your mic. Turn off your mic, please. Turn off your mic. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to the HTML section. And I am going to delete. That I'm going to change that. So that's the body section four. ID of icon. I'm going to change it to a class. Okay. Now, change the class of icon and save that. And then back to hashtag of icon. And let me change this to a class and save. And voila, it's back to normal. So, uh, first thing I'm actually going to do is that for this, I'm going to say uh, the icon. I'm going to take that and I'll give it a proper width and height. So, I'll give it a width of, say, 10 rem. Sorry, 10 rem and a height of 10 rem okay i think this is kind of too much so i think i'll just change this to say seven all right good now uh battery is already 50 percent so it's already a perfect square so if you want to get a perfect square like this, you have to make sure that the width and the height are the same. That way, if you put the border reduced to 50%, it makes this square, it makes it a circle, a very good circle. And uh, I'm going to change this to display flex. Display flex, and I'm going to align items to the center so that Everything's this. Oh, okay. All right. Let's see what's actually causing the issue. Uh, then I am going to justify content center. All right, okay, so the next thing that's left now is to say, uh, you know, zero auto. Yep, and uh, it's back to the center now. All right, so what else do we need to do? Okay, this is looking nice already the way it is. Yeah. This is already okay the way it is. For duty, I think I give duty a padding, a little padding. I give padding of a two rem. All right. Okay. Yeah. I think this is better. So let me let me remove the border so you guys can see it clearly. All right. So uh, I think I'll move our services. Our services heading. 
I'm sorry to say that we just give it a margin. I just give it a text align of center and I think that should do it. Yeah. So so I think we are about to come to the next part of this problem of this section. Oh. Well, I, might be I think this section is also another problem section for you guys. All right, so uh, if this particular section I'm about to enter give you issues, please. Can I this section this uh, plumbing services with the four images? If it give you issues, uh, let me see your hands up, please. Okay, Alani. All right, so um. What was actually your problem with this section? Okay, so Go ahead, you um, can speak. The, yeah, sir. The, the problem I do have is whenever I shift um, the um, about us, that section, whenever I move it to the right hand side, I notice that instead of um, those four pictures to flex into two parts, that is two on this side, two on the other side, they just jump back to rule and also when i try to style it again i will just notice that the sizes changes and it goes back to the original size it now becomes very large okay. and overflow to the next okay. Um, content okay okay all right i get your point very well okay uh akim babalola Yeah, good evening. Sorry, I, uh, good evening. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. When I was actually styling that that particular part of the website, I noticed that the images yeah. were the images were not of the same size. So I actually resized everything. I gave each image different sizes. Okay. And I had to and I had to remove it because I was using a matte to it. So when I when I did oh. it that's not how to take it out to be shaped with to put into the website. Okay, okay. All right, okay. Now, thank you guys very much. You can put your hands up. Uh, Akim Bopola, sorry for mispronouncing your name at first. Um, yeah. So, the thing about uh, responsive design and images is this, and it's what I was trying to explain if you tend to use images just the way they are they keep making your website break flow or your web page to break flow now what do i mean i think you guys have actually experienced that and that's why you guys raised your hands up like when it comes to responsive design uh, sections you found that the image is either becoming too big or it's becoming too long and as it does that it actually tends to break one part of your web page or the other and makes it not responsive. So uh, the best thing to always do is that whenever you're creating your web page, always make sure you put your images in a div. Always make sure you put your images in a div. Okay, so that way once you put your images in a div, you tend to resize the div before resizing the image and the image tends to follow the direction of the div okay so let me explain what I actually mean now um, let me go back to the code and let's see which particular section this is okay this is a um, section five I'm just I think I just finished section four all right so body section five and okay yes for body section five let me see what this young man did here okay now so this is what he did and this is what i was trying to explain you put your images inside a d okay so this is let me zoom in a little so like you see here oh sorry let me zoom out small all right so like you see here what he did he puts his images inside a grid item and then he 
puts he also give a separate class for item 2 item 3 item 4 and item 5 which i think he wanted to use to add generic styles to the images now the thing is once you put your images once you put your images in the image tag inside a div the div is what is actually going to set the width and the height of that particular image so it's no longer the image you use that way it makes it easier for you to know where there's an error and from there it makes it very easy for you to fix that error and know what to do okay so let me do this by example and show you guys what i really mean okay so um for this next section i think the only thing where there's a problem here is that uh, this plumbing services and these images they are not just on the right side they are displayed flex i guess so let's see what we have here okay so uh he displayed grid so for me for body section five what i'll do is this i will display flex okay i'll display flex okay actually before i display flex let me see what happens okay there is an about us section inside the about us section that's where we have the grid okay okay so i see what he did so uh i'll just display flex for here and then i'll take the about us section too and i'll display flex too all right so displaying flex this is what we have all right so uh about us section after displaying flex, um, I'll change the flex direction to column. So that way they stack on top of each other and it stops the overflowing. All right, so. All right, so this is it. And then I, uh, for about our section, I'm actually going to make the height auto. Height is going to be fit content. Okay, so height is going to be fit content. Okay. And uh, I think something else is causing this. So let me check. Uh, yeah, body section 5. Body section 5, uh, I think, has hi uh please sorry whether well, this mic is actually on should turn it off all right so this is what we have good now i think this was what was causing most of the issues then but i think it should be on our way to fixing them now all right so uh, I think the first thing I'm actually going to do here is change the width, the font size of this. Uh, I think I'll change the font size of this item one, the paragraph. Okay, not the paragraph. Uh, let's see, about us and H1. Yeah, I think I'll change this. So let's see. Scrolling down. And then I'll change the font size to a. Uh, okay. I think I'll just make it 4M. The so font size of 4M. And then. Oh, the H2, okay, I think the H2, the same thing too, so, okay, so I don't know why he put both of them in different classes when he could use a break tag, that also works there, that's more like where you could use a break tag, so let's see, uh, uh, save that, and this is what we have, yeah, now, um, 
what is next is uh, Okay, I think uh, I'm just going to say I, I'm actually going to change this for all of them. So, item one, item two, item three, and item four. Well, is that the last item? I think it's up to item five, and then item five. And I could say width of a hundred percent and grid set grid on sets because I don't necessarily use grid, I prefer using flex. Flex is more responsive than grid. Okay, so and then uh. Let's also see what else we're not doing fine here. Uh. Okay. I'm top of a hundred pixels. Okay, so first things first, oh, the about us section. I'm going to give it a border. Solid black. Because I want to see where it ends. So this is the about us section. Okay. Let's see the about us section very well. Okay. So, this is what we have. Alright, so, um, what am I going to do here now? But about the section, first now do I'll say with on sets and uh, yeah with on sets margin auto yeah I'll leave margin auto I don't necessarily need that and then I'll just give it a padding of like to rem okay yeah okay so all right so i think we start from tablets and basically this is how all right so Let's look for a okay. It's an iPad Mini. Let's check. This is still overflowing. All right. So after doing this, okay. So I'm just checking out for something. Uh, let's see. Mobile. And this is for tablets. Alright. Okay.
Uh, so leaving this this way, I think this kind of makes it looks a little bit more responsive. All right. So um, I think the last section or what we have to do here is this footer section, if we can call it that. Because now these images are centralized already so i think i could remove this here now yeah and this is actually good where it is so i'll just see uh, okay so i think we're okay now for this last section which is the to do section so for the to do section let's see what we have i think if we remove the heights yeah, and go to this section. To this section, we could say heights and set heights to on sets because we want all the elements to follow that particular pattern of height and then. The next thing we could do is uh, want to get this H1 to do text H1 and first thing we want to do for the H1 is just reduce the font size. Let's see what it has that we need to do. I think I'll just have to just reduce the font size. So font size. Just change it to 1.8 frame, and I think that's actually okay. yeah, that does it. And then the next thing I want to do is this paragraph. All right, so to do paragraph, so same thing I want to do here. So uh, we could just reduce the font size to. 1.3 rem all right and i think we should be good yeah okay so uh, i think the next step that's actually mean is just a to do button and what could actually just do about that is uh let's see <coughs> okay so we could just see what it to do button uh could say flex direction flex direction of column and I want to give it a margin bottle of like two rem and uh inside this what do we have we have a button so uh we could just say To do button, to give them a width of a hundred percent. Let's see what we have. <coughs> and we could just give them a margin bottom of say one point three m. That's I think that's kind of too much. But let's see what we have. All right. So basically, this is just that. Now, please, uh, if you have any questions about what I've just done from then until now, you could put your hands up, please. So I could just answer one two questions. We are almost out of time. Do you have questions? Are there any questions? So no questions so fast. So uh, our time is exhausted. So I hope you guys actually got the sense of what responsive design is all about from what I just did. So responsive design has to do with both your HTML and your CSS. Don't your HTML well, studying your 
process to get responsive design is actually going to be difficult. Design is that images or images before you actually put an image tag, make sure that you put that image tag in a D. Not set it directly to the image. Set it to your using to cover the image. That way, the image responds to it. And once you set that width and height to the image container, set the image itself. It does give it a width of 100%. So on whatever screen device, all you just have to do is just change the width and the height of the image container. And the image follows that width and height. Then for text, always make sure you think it then line heights that nice. Always check that for each head, for each uh, text in your web page, that it fits very well. Not give very large headings. Headings you're supposed to give for uh, what's it called? Headings you're supposed to give for desktop screens are not going to be same font headings you're going to use for uh, tablet screens. So always be aware of that. Okay. So. Um, if you do not have any more questions, uh, I think this is where we draw the curtain for today's class. If there was enough time, I think we would have added bootstrap. Yes, this is recorded. So yes, you will get this on YouTube. Yeah. All right. Uh, so this is where the class is going to end today. I think I'll be leaving this to the host uh, promise. So let her continue from here. All right, so uh, thank you all. Thank you very much for actually giving us your time. All right, so this is where the class ends. Yeah. All right, thank you, Franklin. And thank you everyone for joining this session to the end. Okay, so the video will be live on YouTube. You can check it out and then follow up along. Thank you all.